Welcome to another short tutorial on internal auditing according VDA 6.3 and IATF 16949. In this short video we will assess how good the equipment and work environment are managed, according VDA 6.3, P6.4. Evaluating how the equipment, spare parts and measuring equipment are planned, installed, released and maintained to ensure that the internal and customer requirements will be achieved. In this session we will be auditing the technical manager. P6.4.1 Can the product-specific requirements from the customer be met with the manufacturing equipment? There must be evidence that the processes are implemented using the existing production facilities, in accordance with the customer's specifications and that the resulting products are of the highest quality. And the production facility, machinery, and equipment must be capable of meeting the specified tolerances for the product and process characteristics. The process capability must meet the requirements of the customer. A 100% inspection is required for significant characteristics where no capability level can be demonstrated. P6.4.2 is the maintenance of the manufacturing equipment and tools controlled? We ensure that there are sufficient resources available for carrying out necessary maintenance activities, such as inspection and repair. An effective process is also implemented for analyzing and optimizing downtime, machine utilization, and tool life and it must also ensure that sufficient spare parts is available. A risk-based maintenance plan is developed based on the identification of key processes and bottleneck machines and the implementation of appropriate preventative and predictive maintenance activities. P6.4.3 Can the quality requirements be effectively monitored with the measurement and test facilities in use? The quality of our products is continuously monitored during all stages of the production process with test and measurement equipment to ensure that internal and customer requirements are met in accordance with the control plan. All the measuring and test equipment in production is controlled and calibrated. Each measuring and test equipment is identified with a unique number, the calibration status and included in the calibration register. The calibration technician must ensure that the equipment is recalibrated according the frequency in the calibration register. The technician also has to ensure that the external laboratory is qualified to calibrate the equipment and that the calibration certificate shall include the mark of the national accreditation body. All measuring and test equipment that is out of calibration or damaged must be blocked and taken out of circulation. We also do capability studies on our test and measuring equipment, either following the AIA GMSA guide or following the VDA Volume 5 guide, depending on the customer requirement. The first step is to determine the capability of the test equipment. You need to measure 50 samples and, the CG and CGK result must be equal or larger than 1.33. The second step is to do a study 2 evaluation to determine the repeatability and the reproducibility study which include the operator influence. You will ask 2 to 3 operators to measure the 10 reference test objects 3 times. The GRR result must be below 10% according to AIA GMSA guide to be acceptable. The result between 10% and 30% is marginally acceptable, and above 30%, it is rejected. A study 3 test is also performed on automated measuring equipment where the operator has no influence. Finally an attribute study needs to be done for all go and no go gauges and for visual inspection requirements. P6.4.4 Are the work and inspection stations appropriate for the needs? The working environment should be ergonomically designed so that it meets the demands of the work performed and be appropriate for the products. So that contamination, damage, mixing up parts, may be prevented, or eliminated. P6.4.5
are the tools, equipment and test equipment stored properly. All tools, equipment and test equipment, including gauges, must be stored and managed properly. This also applies for tools, equipment and test equipment not in use or not yet released. The cleanliness and tidiness must always be ensured. All tools, equipment and test equipment are identified showing either if it is internal or customer property, with the current status. All changes are documented in the change history record. The issue and use of this equipment is also controlled and documented. Thank you for watching how to audit P6.4. What material resources are used to support the process? In the next tutorial we will discuss how to audit P6.5. How effective is the process being carried out? We invite you to like and share our videos with your colleagues and friends. Your success is our priority. For more information visit our website at www.mpquality.com.